Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely morning. So today I would like to go over an article that I actually agree with a majority of the points in, but there's one way that they went to make their point that I disagreed with. And to be clear, I understand that I am being pedantic here, and I also understand that I don't like when others are pedantic, and I will slap myself for doing so. But since this is something that I discuss in the channel on a regular basis, I thought it was really wor worth uh, just, just pointing out here. So this article is talking about building New York City for people, not automobiles. And they're talking about Robert Moses, and they're talking about how the city was laid out and designed, and they're also talking about regulations and building codes that require, if you are building certain types of housing, that you also build parking, and how you have a city where one of the biggest problems is not enough housing and expensive housing, and yet you have limitations that are placed on the type of housing you can build that discourage people from building more housing. Now, I agree that if you are going to put 8.5 million people in a space the size of Knoxville, Tennessee, that requiring parking being built is kind of silly, and, make, and making it a car-based uh, car city is also kind of silly. To be clear, I enjoy driving a car down here. I am not anti-automobile, not anti-car, I'm not anti-driving anti a car. I am anti-building four-car infrastructure when you have this tiny space with 8.5 million people. It fundamentally does not work a great majority of the people in New York City do not drive a car. In spite of the fact that a very small percentage of the people in New York City actually drive a car, it still absolutely sucks to drive a car through New York City because again, population density, you look at the size of a car, you look at the size of the city and you look at how many people there, it's just not something that works. You know, people, we've tried to make it work for a very long time. It's not going to happen with that level of population density. Now, the, and I understand the arguments that they're making. If you are going to require to build housing, that you also build parking, you are going to have people decide that they are not going to build housing. If people do not build housing, then you will have uh, not enough housing. Not enough housing means that the prices will go up, which is what has continuously occurred in New York City. It's funny that the, in spite of the fact that the population is actually going down in New York City, the rents continue to go up. It is absolutely astra it is ridiculous. Now, there's one po thing that they use to make their point here that I just could not help but interject on. And it says that parking spots take up room that could be used by ground level retailers, limiting opportunities for small and local businesses that have to compete with these chains, and that it displaces ground level retail. And that this is a problem, that it is displacing ground level retail if you are going to have them build a parking spot because the space that these are parking could be used for a mall or ground level retail. The reason that retail is not thriving in New York City has nothing to do with the fact that, uh, that we have a car-based infrastructure or that parking is eating into that. That has to do with the fact that you have places that are more than happy to stay empty for two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, if it, as, because God forbid they get less than 300 to 500 a square foot. So here I went over a bunch of different stores where they said that somebody else is gonna take it if you don't take it in the next week. And over one year later, most of them were still empty. Here I have a playlist called Dead City Neighborhood Walkthroughs, and I went through some of the areas one year, two years, sometimes almost three years after my real estate search for a new store ended. And what you see here is that many of these places stay empty for years on end. You'll have spaces that are the size of this place that I'm sitting in right here right now, like something that is this size will be going for $300 to $500 per square feet which means that something that is the size of what I just circled around in New York City for retail will wind up costing somewhere between twenty dollars to $40,000. That's fucking crazy. And you can hear in my real estate playlist where I'm walking through a place, they say it's like two or 3,000 square feet. I measure it and it's 1,000. And they're like, yeah, it's gonna cost the same anyway. Like, this is no shame. And when you walk by these places, they are still empty. Retail is not being hurt in New York City as a result of there being a parking-based uh, infrastructure when you're building housing or the way parking is done. We have a glut of empty real estate. If you walk around any part of Manhattan, you will see retail space for lease signs all over the block. There's a lot of retail space for lease. It's not like there's a shortage of it. There is no shortage of retail space for lease in New York City. The problem is that at three to $500 a square foot, it doesn't make sense. And dare I say it, I will say it, at this point in time, I strongly believe that even at 80 to $100 a square foot, doesn't make sense either. Hell, I'm honestly struggling to figure out if it makes sense even at 66 bucks a square foot. I got mine negotiated to be lower until September of this year, and when September of this year comes, if shit still stays the way it is, um, like, I'm out of there. <laughs> 
Anyway, the other thing that I found also interesting in here, and please let me know what you think of this if you've actually been to another country. It says, meanwhile, the MTA, the best mass transit system in the world, is facing budget shortfalls and other challenges exacerbated by the pandemic-induced plunge in ridership. And they're saying that parking minimums are incenting people to drive cars, money is pouring into, and subsidies wind up pouring into creating car-based infrastructure, while the MTA, the best mass transit system in the world, and... Um, yeah, you guys ever, uh, guys ever take like one of the red trains to like Chamber Street? You ever just want to go to New York, to, to Manhattan from Bed-Stuy or Clinton Hill or Williamsburg on a weekend? Oh, you can't. The L train's not working. It's only working between these hours and it's not working over the weekend. I mean, like, again, you know, I started taking public transportation in New York City in 2002. I was 13 years old. It is 2022. It has been 20 fucking years. And you, there's still places that I can't get to on a regular basis using a train at a certain time where I have to like reroute myself in all these crazy ways because it doesn't work. And that's aside from the fact that it's physically nauseating and disgusting. Just the appearance of it. Even if it worked 100%, which it doesn't. If you live in Gravesend and you have to take the F train in Manhattan, you know how fucked up this shit is. If you live in Bed-Stuy, I mean, if you live anywhere on the L train past... Lorimer, and then again past Myrtle Wyckoff, you're probably not just taking one shuttle bus, but two shuttle buses on a regular basis when this shit breaks and fucks up all the time, which it does. I used to live in the Rockaway Parkway stop. I know. Uh, Rockaway uh, Carsey Canarsi stop in 2009 and 10. I, like, I'm aware of how much this system sucks. Like, have you been to other parts of the world where the subways or the trains and the buses not only work, but are clean? The best mass transit system in the world? Bruh. Again, I know it's not the point of the article, and I agree with the primary point of the article, that in 2022, continue to, work in, uh, to focus on car infrastructure in this area doesn't make sense. I know there's people in Peterborough, New Hampshire. I know there's people in Custer, South Dakota. They're going to be mad. I'm not saying in your area where you got one or 2,000 people don't focus on car-based infrastructure. You do you. 8.5 million people in a space this tiny. You, you got to change things up. It also particularly drives me nuts that just the, the amount of resistance that New York City has had to e-bikes for such a long period of time. They are such a great way of getting around. Again, a motorcycle is going to be expensive and difficult to bring inside certain areas. Uh, there's also, we, we, they talk about climate change there. You don't really have options for electric motorcycles outside the zero, which is insanely expensive and also, in my opinion, a shitty company. You have gas motorcycles, but again, that's gas, and I'm talking about climate change and caring and all that. And electric bike is is very very cheap. They're cheaper than a lot of most motorcycles. Really easy to get around. Doesn't make a lot of noise. If you don't ride like a dumbass, is a again safe, easy way to get around. For the longest time, that was illegal. I'm fairly certain the way I've configured my electric bike in New York City, 99% certain that shit's illegal. But. I get around. It's safe for me. It's I've like yet to hit anybody or get into an accident with it, and I am happy with it. And, you, and like, when you see just how difficult it is to get around with a car, just how slow everything is, and it, it, it's it's almost like when I get out of my car in Manhattan or Brooklyn and I get on my electric bicycle, I feel like I have unlocked a cheat code. I feel like I have inserted a game shark. I feel like I am I am now free. You know, like I feel like I've went from having a 104 fever to being healthy again. Just your ability to navigate and get around things and get in between things when every, when everything stops. It's it takes me over an hour to get home from work in a car. Even when it's not rush hour, but I can get to my, where my old apartment used to be in 23 minutes on an electric bike. It's just, it's beautiful. But again, God forbid you make things easier for stuff that is actually efficient. <sighs> anyway, that's about that. I'm going to be looking for some real estate, commercial real estate in areas that are not New York City uh, in, in the future. There is something that I'm dealing with right now that I'm not quite, I'm not 110%, I'm not 100% certain to be honest with you if I'm still going to be in business when it's done. But if I am, again, I got my eye on other places. I already, I already kind of found a place that I like for, for, for where I would live personally, personally. Uh, but, but business is still in New York City right now. But I'm looking. Anyway, that's it for today. And as always, hope you learned something. See you all in the next video. This is not why retail is empty in New York City. 500 bucks a square foot, permanently for lease real estate is. And uh, you can see the links in the description down below for the, those playlists. And I'll see you next time.